Hey everyone, welcome back. We have a replay review today of Cute Kitten's Six Sector Victory in the J8M, the uh, Japanese premium tier 8 version of the 163 Comet. And uh, <laughs> Kitten's, uh, Kitten's already saying in chat, boo, bomber flight. So let's do what we always do first and check out who the enemies are. We've got a pair of flighted specialized B-29Cs on one side of uh, the arena and on the other side, Cute Kitten specialized J8M and Royal Wolverine specialized Kerr first. Normally I would say bombers have an advantage, but if you look on this map, it's four garrisons and an airfield. There's no specialized sectors here like mining plants. And so as a result of that, I think that evens the playing field just a smidge. So um, <coughs> one of the things that's gonna help with a six sector victory, and that's one of the things I know about this replay is moving quickly from point A to point B. And so he's already boosted, taken out all of his boosts to get to this point. And you can see the incredible speed of the 163, uh, the JM here. Um, but it was going so fast, kind of missed the, um, only got half of the HP on this. Now the nice thing is he's running a, a maneuver build. It's a full maneuver build. So G suit, lightweight, wing frame, lightweight power plant, and uh, long barrels on the guns to help with a little bit of range. And then also the chrome paint here to help with keeping the cruise speed up. And he's gonna boost through that turn and go after the other heavy, which I would agree is the best, best way to do it. The light ADAs are a little trickier to deal with. Oh, almost one. So uh, he's running long barrels, and that's what I would do too. But there is an argument for running gas-operated action on this. And uh, it would be because of situations like this. Right, one more one more set of shots, a uh, little bit more output, and that, that little pass there might would have been enough uh, to drop this uh, ADA and, and prevent um, Kitten from having to circle one time. So... And that should do it right there. Yep. All right, so that's one down. He's going to head to the airfield, which looks like a nice fur ball over there. You got the specialized B-29 dropping on it, which means the other specialized B-29 is over here. <coughs> that's interesting. I'm not sure. Um, not sure I would have done that. So I'll, I'll show you why. Um, so this airfield, um, because of where the red spawn is, if I was in a flighted B-29, I'm, you know, I'm not a pro, so maybe this is the wrong move, but if I'm specialized flighted B-29s, I send one person to the J-3 garrison in the southwest there, and I send the other person to the E-9 garrison in the east there, and I cap both of those, and then I, I run one of us from southwest to northeast, just back and forth along that track and the other one from east to west back along that track as well. Because it's a little harder to capture the airfield um, with just bombers, <coughs> there's such a furball and such an exchange of capture points over it in a centralized zone like this, it's hard to one-pass it. And the B-29 is special for being able to one-pass things. And <coughs> so this is interesting. Um, I, I'm not sure the strategy-wise it plays out. The other thing that's interesting to me is um, this tells me since that first zone in the southwest there is not captured, uh, that whoever is in that zone, um, I assume maybe Liberty, because I think Death must be the one who's just now hitting the airfield, um, doesn't know how to one pass a zone. So if they don't know how to one pass, if this is a specialized flight, that's strong, but if they don't know how to one pass a zone in the specialized B-29, that also makes this a much easier playing field for, for Kitten and for Wolverine. So we're going to go after the heavies again. Makes sense. That's one of our six sectors, by the way. It's hard to do up close. All right, so one of the things that's, you know, the replays on this game are, are scragged, right? And the reason for that is because the camera angle is wonky, right? Like, <laughs> in theory, I should be looking right down the barrels, but you can see from the way his tracers are going. Like, it doesn't, when I zoom in, it's obviously not true. So does that make sense? And then I zoom out. I'm literally just holding the mouse key. So this should be a straight track in and track out. But it changes, right? The, the angle changes. So again, I'm lined up. Now all I'm going to do is zoom in. I'm going to use my mouse scroll wheel and zoom in. Watch what happens. See? So the camera ang camera does not track the way you think it does, right? And if I pull out, it's the same thing, right? 
So the camera angles are busted. And not only the camera angles busted here in the replay, the camera angles are busted in the game as well. So anything that's up this close, you get fisheye with, um, basically. And so anything under 100 meters, it's almost impossible to land a shot. Unless you're just a, you know, playing with a bunch of machine guns that can just spray a barrage of bullets in front of you, you're not going to hit anything within 100 meters. It's just not going to happen. So 200 meters is usually about as close as you want to be when shooting at something. Um, anything less than that, especially in a, in a finicky gun, a cannon plane like this, um, is going to be a dice roll. So we're going to loop out and make another pass there. And there's Wolverine coming from the spawn zone, I guess. Yeah, he must have gotten shot down over the airfield. Good deal. That's some capture points. Buys us some time to keep this from going over red. The bomber has moved on to the zone that they had originally captured, so he's going to take that in a minute here. Okay, good. This is this is a good target for the JADM. Um, you, you're faster than heavies, right? You can stick with them. You've got great guns to handle them. Unfortunately, in this case, it's outside the zone. So, uh, didn't help with the capture point situation, but one more bot off the ground, or out of the air, I guess I should say. So Wolverine hits another one. That's going to take us down, but then we lose a friendly pain. Planes are right back where he started from. So this is this is combat over the airfield. Nothing unusual for all of you. You know how that works. Good, good, good switch to an ADA there. Get some points. And yeah, we're going to loop over. That one's gone. We lost another friendly plane, though. He's going to take a few shots at the LA-9. Uh, really, I think I would have gone for the, the P-80. Uh, one of the things with... with Planes that are hard to maneuver, um, and you want to when you speed away from planes. I've talked about being you know one kilometer before you turn around and re-engage them. That also means when you're starting an engagement, one kilometer is is ideal, especially for as fast as this plane is. So I probably would have just burned straight through for this P80 and uh, gotten on his tail because uh, I think that would have been easier, especially with broadside underneath hits like this. It's easier to hit the cross section of the P80 with finicky cannons here than it would be directly behind him, right? Or if he's maneuvering, he's just burning after the ADA. All right, so looks like Wolverine finished the LA-9. We finally managed to zero out the zone a little bit here. And we're trying to finish off another heavy ADA. All right, and the P-80 is coming back in. <clears throat> I don't know if he's watching minimap at this point or not, but... Um, All right, he's going to turn. Yeah, the P-80's definitely tracking him. And actually, so I don't know if he meant to do this or not. Hopefully he did, but this is this is a great move on his part. So the P-80 has to turn to shoot him, and it has to bleed a bunch of speed. And he's basically taken an escape angle that forces a tight turn. Um, and as a result of that, there's very little time for the P-80 to be guns on right before he's gone. He's going to lose some HP, but he's also activated his boost cooler. That's interesting. I, I don't run a boost cooler on my JADM, mostly because, you know, the six seconds isn't, is, you can get to top speed in three seconds on this thing. Um, and it retains the speed fairly well. <coughs> and it also regens that boost very quickly, much more quickly than some other aircraft do. So I don't normally run the boost cooler, but he's got it here. He's got seven more seconds of boosting away. Yeah, we're going to track down the, I, I would do this too. I would. Wolverine probably has this airfield locked up. Uh, with his curve first, I would think at this point, um, yeah, he's he's going to be able to finish that. Some of that, I, 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 he's good here. I would burn on to this next sector for sure. Um, that's that's absolutely the way to go. I would have played this as well. We need to get another zone locked down, and we can do that better. You know, split up a little bit. So again, we're going so fast that we we weren't able to finish off the P47. So. Again, and I'm not sure that 10-second boost is worth it on here. Of course, he's specialized, so he's running the engine restart and the boost. So I totally get that. Um, but I think I would run the engine restart and the, um, uh, what's the oil, whatever, the one that increases. You don't really need the extra thrust, but it also increases cruise speed. That was dangerous right there. The 1056 has massive guns on it, and this is a very fragile plane. I'm surprised the ram didn't kill him. Uh, fortunate in that. And again, we'll like, like see we're un under 200 meters here. See how the shots are just going everywhere? And again, it's because the camera angles are funky, right? And if, if I zoom in, zoom out, like, oh, oh okay, we're, we're, you know, 10 degrees off of him. No, maybe not. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really odd. 
So, and you can see he, here he's shooting, right? And he on his thing, it probably looks like he's shooting directly at the, the 1070 or 1056, but the reality is I'm pretty far off, right? Like right here, we might be. It looks like we're lined up, right? But if we zoom in, we're really far off. So uh, it's, it's interesting to me how this camera thing works, and it does penalize planes like this a little bit. I would do a lag roll here. Uh, I would lag roll out, get some separation, and um, you know, about to maybe 250 or 300 meters, um, and just make it easier. But you can see there, once it got out to 200 meters, he had a much easier time landing those shots. Now it's just time to clean up some ADAs. Better to go for the heavies here again as he did before. So yeah, definitely doing that. It occurs to me, Kitten, I, I don't know if I should be saying he or she. I just assumed a he, which is very wrong on my part, I guess. But if I have done that improperly, let me know. My apologies. 7 HP. Whew. All right, but this zone is capped, and the airfield got capped. So that's that's one, two, three zones now that Kitten has uh, latched onto. So we're halfway through the battle in terms of the number of caps. All right, the B-29 is rolling low through the zone. I know a lot of people have suggested that. Um, I don't know. I, I can only tell you this. I don't, I don't have a B-29. I don't want a B-29. I don't care about playing a B-29. But I can tell you this. When I'm playing against B-29s, I am... Super happy to see a low-flying B-29. I want them low. When they're low, it's much easier to take care of them. It's much easier for me to get guns on, do brushing passes, <coughs> or um, deal with them in the midst of distractions that they may have. Good good deal, not. I wouldn't engage. If you're going to do this B-29, I would do a brushing pass on it, you know, speed by, dump 500 HP worth of damage on it, and then move on, something like that, get it to where the bots have an easier time of dropping it down. But I mean, yeah, this, this B-29, I, I just, this just makes life easier for the other team when you're that low. And Wolverine, look, Wolverine switched to a 109Z. <laughs> so uh, Wolverine's gone hard counter on these guys. So that definitely puts advantage to, to the blue team for sure. Um, this is a little bit of a losing endeavor. Uh, one, Wolverine's already here defending the airfield and that's cool. Uh, you've got one person doing that. But also, defending in general is a losing proposition. That's why we tell people always be capping. Think about this. Um, so as the B-29 is rolling through here, every ADA he kills is 40 points. Every blue regular aircraft he kills, bot or player, whichever one, is worth 60 capture points. And he needs 85 now to capture the zone, right? So, uh, but let's say we shoot down the B-29. We're going to get 40 capture points. 40 capture points here, right? Like, the the volume of capture points, he went from 85 to 125, we got 40 for, for shooting down a player aircraft. So the, the volume, the way capture points are set up offensively and defensively, there is an inherent advantage to capping zones as opposed to defending them. So you want to defend the, you want to defend the zone as little as you need to, right? Just as much as you need to. Really what you want to be doing is capping zones because the preponderance of capture points you know the way it works. You're just you're eventually going to lose the zone. Um, you know if you're if you're a light fighter, you know if you're a Spitfire or the one of the Japanese fighters, it's much easier. You can get around on the dime. You can shoot down aircraft quickly. You know it's easier to hold that zone against that onslaught of capture points. Um, but generally speaking, you just want to move on and cap something. Boost away from the LA. Yes, that's good. You also saw the guns have gone a little cold on him. I think. So having a hard time hitting. It's hard to hit planes when you're directly behind them when you have guns like this because you don't have the cross section to deal with, right? Like, look, what I'm talking about is this: if I'm shooting it at the, you know, 160 of the J8M here, there's a little bit of a cross section, right? Pretend the the green is my crosshairs, right? So being able to hit him is, and there's you also don't do as much damage hitting the the wings. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but um, so it's hard to hit this. Now, if I'm shooting at him from the top side. Right. Imagine that crosshair again. It's much easier to hit. So when you're directly behind the aircraft, it's very hard to hit them, even if you have good, good accuracy in the guns. So you want an angle like this. See, this guy's climbing. You need a little more lead on that, I think. Um, again, these are very low muzzle velocity guns. Same thing. You just want you want a lag roll here. Um, 
So lag roll is uh, basically looping behind him on his tail like you're doing, but taking more to immediate instead of immediately turning back, like follow the trajectory out and then barrel roll around. And when you come out, you'll be 200 meters behind instead of 50 meters behind, right? So there you go. This is this. Uh, if he had rolled back the other way and started heading back towards the ADA at this point, that would be a lag roll. So. All right. Finish these guys off. At least one of them off, and that will be the zone. That's 40 cap points. Yeah, so it's so hard to get shots right here. So hard. Um, I don't know if that was a ram or if somebody else got him or, or what it was. But All right, we're at squall line, so that's good. Now it's time to start knocking stuff down. Oh, and, and their B-29 is coming in low over the airfield again. I, I would make a pass on the B-29. We're at squall line. He's at half health. You've got boost. He's activated his boost cooler. I would use that boost cooler for 10 seconds of boost down on this guy and just do a mad pass on him. Um, if I can catch him while he's turning, especially broadside, like I mentioned from the top or from the bottom, and those cannons, can, I can do 500, 600 damage in one pass, and then he'll be just at minimum health. It'll be easy to knock him down at this point. Uh, I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure you need the boost cooler. 10 seconds. You only need about three seconds to get to top speed, right? And... Um, so it looks like yeah, he's not boosting now. He's just letting the cooler recharge him, his um, his boost. B-29's headed away. We're going to put the Z down to sleep for the rest of the match here. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, almost. And because, so, again, again, that's... I think at times Kitten is moving a little too fast in this plane, a little slower. You know, if you're going to run, if you're going to run long barrels, you need to be moving a little slower. If you're running a gas operated action, you keep your speed up because again, you can get one more, two more shots off in the same time period. Um, but you're always moving faster than you think you are. In the JDM. Oh, that was painful too. That was almost very bad. Another shot had landed. That would have been it. By the way, that zone over there was four. So we got two more to go, I think, in terms of capping. There we go. And that's the other heavy out, I think. We get this one. Ah, okay. Br brilliant. Brilliant. Top shelf veteran move here. All right. Uh, why not just go ahead and kill him? He, he's, he's dead to rights. Why? Look at the timer on the airfield. He's waiting for that timer to click to zero. Because if that timer clicks to zero, and then he kills the 1056, he gets 60 capture points. If he kills him while the timer is still running, while the zone is still locked, he gets nothing. So he is holding his shots until the timer clears. 60 points. Only need 120 now. So I need three of these ADAs or two of the uh, regular planes on the other side to make this uh, zone flip. So awesome. Well played. That's something everybody should be thinking about. See, see there, there, he was 150, 200 meters back. It was much easier to land the shots. That's what I'm talking about. Like, you want to you wanna knife fight with this? Yeah, but not quite that. Oh, yeah, good, good. Get, get guns on. Get a pass. There we go. Somebody else dropped down, so that's uh, that's good. So the zones recap. That's five zones. But, yeah, finish, finish him off. There you go. And again, maybe just a smidge more lead on the guns. They, the shells do move very slow, so... All right, we're only up three to two. <coughs> they only have four planes left, but still, um, I think this is a this is probably a victory at this point. We just want to maximize personal points. All right, look, this this zone will be easy to cap. There's a half dead 109Z. There's a half dead ADA. He's going to go after the Z. We lost the Z, so this is where sighting comes in, right? Uh, the ability to view range and, and camouflage and stuff. We lost the Z. Um, and we've lost the other one up here. He's activated boost cooler again. Again, I don't know that you need it. You, you had three seconds there. You're just now boosting. You used about two, three seconds of boost there. And he's back in, right? So, and again, we're doing 930. I would stop boosting at this point, right? You're going so fast. You're doing 926. He's 600 meters away. Be hard to get those on. All right, good. He was long off on health that time. It didn't matter. And then this one, easy peasy, done. And this is good, by the way. You want to work the vertical again with an energy fighter like this, right? So that is, wait, was that zone six? 
I think that's zone six. Yeah, yeah zone six. All right. And that's the game. We're at 800 to 400, right? Looks like the B-29 and uh, this Typhoon, yeah, are all that's left. So uh, 275 capture points received on the offensive there. 15 are targets destroyed, two destroyed while defending. So a pretty good show in this. Let's see what the personal points rang in at. Yeah, he says good game. All right, so 1325. Uh, very good on the grade progress. One more kill while defending would have put him in a in a grade one, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, it looks like it. Um, maybe two. I don't know what the jump is on that first segment there. Uh, but anyway, well done. Um, I'm not too worried about this. It's you know if you need different missions or whatever, great. But there are other indicators of success than, than the grade. Um, although it does tell you really well how to fly your plane. If you're not sure how to fly a plane, the indicators on your grade is is a good starting place. So first in the team, first in the rank in terms of uh, performance. Uh, was it personal points or just? Yeah, he's personal points and and um, grade as well, both. And then Conquer, at least 450 points in a single battle. Well done. And then Akamatsu, 400 points, aerial targets in a single story. So good as well. And then Flying Warrior, maximum effectiveness in air battle for sectors, which I think is this third one here. Yep. So a uh, great match, did really well, um, controlled the game. Wolverine kicking to the 109Z to hard counter the two of them was awesome as well. Uh, just made it for a completely different ball game. And you know, one of those matches where at first blush, you know, I tell you you're against flighted B-29s and your heart sinks. It's not always as bad as you think it is, right? Keep a little chin up. Uh, Kitten did a great job keeping speed up, keeping energy up, dealing with things, getting those tricky guns on target, you know. There was a couple places where the guns went cold on him, but he still still knocked down 15 targets. That's great. That's really good. Um, so, you know, as much as these guns can sometimes be frustrating, they are effective. They really are. And the biggest thing about this video, you see how much the J8M shines when it's specialized. It's a little tricky and regular. Once you specialize it, I feel like it opens up into a whole new fighter. There's a whole lot more there to be able to do with it. So, well played, Kitten. Great match. Well played, Wolverine. Great match. Ghost and Death. Better luck next time uh, with the flights. And uh, so, wonderful replay video. Thanks, Kitten, for letting me share it and uh, do some commentary on it. Hope it's helpful to everybody. Good luck with your Gathering Storm um, you know, marathon this weekend. You know, hopefully, it goes well for you. And Corvus and I are planning on a Tempest video for y'all. We'll record it this weekend and put it out probably Sunday or Monday, depending on timing, so you can get. Um, some expert opinion on the Tempest and whether or not you should be really putting some time and effort towards grinding it. I'll tell you the early indications from people I've talked to are that it is a good plane and it is worth the grind. So we'll go into that in detail next. Until then, pilots, good luck and good hunting.